Hello viewers, it's time for an update on my 100k challenge. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this challenge, well, I have a link in the description and also right here if you want it more completely described. However, the bottom line is I need to get to 100,000 subscribers and Starship needs to get to orbit successfully, that is, before Vulcan Centaur delivers its payload to the moon. If that happens, my ass is literally on the line. And if you want more explanation on that, well, check out the other video. But in the meantime, a lot of people may have observed or may be speculating that my ass is indeed on the line and in deep trouble, given the progress that's been going on at Starbase. We are days away from the FAA granting their permission for Starship to continue with testing and there's been a hell of a lot going on at Boca Chica. And by the way, this footage is courtesy of my friends at La Padre. Go and check out some of their newest bulletins. They've been keeping everyone up to date on what's been taking place. Oop, by the way, did you see that? That was Starship being put under a pressure test, and also you get to see some tiles fall away from the Starship after a failed portion of this test. However, another pressure test was subsequently carried out successfully and things are looking very good for Starship. However, in my opinion, Vulcan Centaur is still a far more mature rocket and will be able to carry out its first mission before a stack Starship can actually get to orbit. Why do I feel this way? Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... And once again, these are just little clips from recent bulletins that Lab Padre has put out about Starship progress, so I urge you to check that out in their entirety. It's linked in the description. However, one thing that really needs to be kept in mind as we observe all of this is as quickly as SpaceX has been rolling out these new prototypes and conducting all of these new tests, we've been taking a previous Pathfinder versions of Starship, including boosters back to the scrap heap. It's just one test after another without a whole lot of flight, which is to be expected in this stage of rocket development, especially for the most powerful rocket in human history. We are nowhere close to trying to do a static fire with 30 plus engines on the booster, let alone stacking these two giants on top of one another and trying to get them to orbit. That having been said though, of course, there have been huge delays with BE-4 and Blue Origin. They seem incapable of doing anything except sending rockets into suborbital flight. And I don't trust Blue Origin, I don't trust Jeff Bezos, but I do trust Tori Bruno. Tori Bruno is an engineer. Tori Bruno is a rocket scientist, and Tori Bruno can cut through the bullshit. He's had an opportunity to watch the BE-4 engines being hot tested for literally thousands of seconds now. He's had an opportunity to see these things in action, and I think that he is very qualified to tell us whether or not these engines are ready for service. Flight certified engines will be delivered in a month or two at most, and Vulcan Centaur will launch before the end of the year. That's what he's saying, and I believe what this guy says. I don't think he operates on Elon time. However, anything can happen with Blue Origin, and I could very well be wrong. But he's not the only one who's saying things like this. On June 8th, it was announced that Northrop Grumman had been awarded a multi-year contract valued at more than $2 billion from United Launch Alliance for increased production of its 63-inch diameter graphite epoxy motor, or GEM-63. This particular variation that you're watching right now, by the way, is the GEM-63L. That's a hell of a lot of money being spent on solid rocket boosters. Quote, Northrop 
Grumman's GEM 63L is the longest monolithic single cast solid rocket booster ever produced. Built on decades of expertise, our newest GEM motors provide customers with affordable, repeatable, and reliable products they can trust to boost their most important missions. That's according to Wendy Williams, who's the VP of Propulsion Systems from Northrop Grumman. Why the hell would they be investing $2 billion in solid rocket boosters if they were uncertain about the BE-4? I feel very confident that Vulcan Centaur is approximately six months away from launch and will definitely launch before the end of the year unless something very unusual and unexpected takes place. That having been said, there's also some other indications from the U.S. Space Force strongly suggesting that Vulcan Centaur will be in service soon. They just concluded their first eight Space Force missions, and five of them were awarded to ULA, three were awarded to SpaceX per the original contract. The U.S. Space Force missions are as follows. A Vulcan Centaur launch from Cape Canaveral to deploy the GPS-3-7 navigation satellite into a medium Earth transfer orbit, three Vulcan Centaur launches from Cape Canaveral, codenamed USSF-16, USSF-23, and USSF-43, carrying classified payloads, and finally a Vulcan and Centaur launch from Cape Canaveral to deploy the wideband global SATCOM 11 communication satellite into a geosynchronous transfer orbit. I don't think the Space Force would award these extremely critical missions to ULA, which by the way can't be carried up by a SpaceX rocket because of difference in fairing sizes and other capabilities that either rocket has. You would have to re-engineer the entire mission if you wanted SpaceX to carry any of these things, I really don't think the U.S. Space Force would have done this if they were uncertain about the future of Vulcan Centaur. And lest you think that my support for ULA means that I'm going soft on the Old Boys Network, well, check out my latest merch. This is my scrub liner t-shirt, orbital flight redo two and a half, partial success, and still more expensive than what it's replacing. This is now available in my online store, and there are links to this in the description. In addition to that, I also have a t-shirt with my latest logo feature in my store as well. Check out the description for links in case you're interested in either of these products. Okay, enough self-promotion, let's move on. It's also important to remember that the first Vulcan Centaur mission is not going to be some sort of test flight, but rather is going to be carrying an extremely important payload. The first U.S. mission to land on the lunar surface in half a century, and there are so many important pieces of equipment in the payload on the Astrobotic Peregrine, including the Iris Lunar Rover from Carnegie Mellon University, the Lunar Dream capsule from Astroscale Japan, the Moon Arc from Carnegie Mellon University, Memory of Mankind on the Moon from Pulley Space Technologies in Hungary, and the Neutron Spectrometer System from NASA. And that's just a few of dozens of different payloads that are going to be carried on this lunar taxi, which means that this mission needs to go well. It needs to go flawlessly. And I don't think that all of these companies, plus NASA, plus Astrobotic, would be trusting all of these payloads to an unreliable rocket. There are many, many reasons that I believe that Vulcan Centaur is going to have a successful first flight and a first flight in the next few months. But I could be wrong, and I'll keep you guys up to date because there's a lot at stake. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and also remember the various types of merch that I now have available in my store, along with my new Angry Astronaut sunglasses. And until either Vulcan Centaur or Starship or both launch advancing mankind's expansion into the solar system, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.